All right, it's early to mid-March and I'm getting ready to hit the river for some river smallmouth. And I'm looking down at it now and it's, it's rising, it's certainly coming up. We've got a little bit of snow here. I'm gonna have to drag the kayak over. Uh, and certainly uh, we've had a lot of snow melt. Here's the gauge that shows you the, the river coming up. And what I'll show you next is the, the water temperature itself. So you can see, you know, with the sunlight each day it comes up and at night it goes down and there's a slow sort of progression upward. We had a very warm day a couple days back, really sent the water temperature up, but as soon as it went up, it came right back down because of all that snow melt. The snow melt is gonna do a couple things. Yeah, it is cooling things off. It's, it's uh, about 37 degrees in this river right now. Um, it's also gonna you know make the river come up and that is gonna push them to the bank pretty tight. So there's two places that I'm gonna I'm gonna just spot hit briefly today. Uh, one is is right down here. There's a winter hole. It's gonna take all the fish that were down in these these ledge trenches and throw them right up on the bank. So while it's gonna be a challenge for me and I'm probably only gonna go down there with one or two rods so I don't get stuff tangled up in the uh, the branches above me. Um, I'm going to be sitting on top of a bunch of fish in one place. It just highly, you know, a rising river in particular highly concentrates the fish on the bank. A lot of debris here on this shoreline eddy where I'm launching. Pull out here and see how fast it's pushing us down. Yeah, as soon as I get out in current, I'm being swept down. So high and muddy and apparently 37 degrees. First thing I'm doing is getting some of that scent on there. I don't know if you can see in the background behind me but there is chunks of plate ice coming down the river. So more than just snow melt we're having a lot of ice from this pretty brutal winter we've had. It's all busting loose. But I got a nice calm water eddy right here in front of me so visibility is I don't know is, is poor I don't think I can see two three inches down in there but the fish are good at finding it though they are able to with their lateral line that they don't just have that running down the length of their body a lot of people know that but they have lateral line on their on the top of their head that allows them to really feel movement like these tube tentacles coming at, um, at close range. That's what they do is they come up onto it and they cock on it. And that, that's what, you know, the, the lateral line across their the top of their head is how they kind of visually feel without touching. You know, they, they sense, um, you know, movement out in front of them even if they can't see it. That's, that's the gift of that lateral line sense. It's one that, that we don't have that fish do. Their other senses I'm really trying to appeal to are uh, the sound. Certainly these fish are able to, to hear things. And that's why I put a rattle in the tube. Um, and then scent, of course, you know, their, their taste and smell. And I think they're down in there and they're, they're putting their mouth on things and they're, fe they're feeling, they're testing things, sucking it in. And if it feels like food and tastes like food and, you know, they'll hold on to it. Otherwise, they spit it right out. And that's what that scent does is it, it assures them, yep, you're, you're on the right track. Gives me another, you know, split second to, uh, to set the hook. Hi, fat fish. <laughs> oh, look how pasty he is. And that's that's what they do. They get they lose their tiger stripe bars when they're uh, when you have this muddy muddy water. So black tube, dragon head, rattle, scent, and I've pushed myself all the way up against this shoreline and. That allows me to make a very short cast out to these fish. The current is ripping right out here, uh, but I, I do have an eddy here where they can take refuge. 
get him back in. The presentation I'm making is one of, of longer pauses, but I'm also hopping it. When I'm hopping it, they're just tiny little hops. I mean, you know, if I can get it to even shake in place, but just bump, bump, bump. What that does is engages that rattle and it clicks in place and it allows this fish to, to, ooh, I just missed one, to lock in on where it is. Maybe he'll pick it up again. Too busy talking, not paying attention to my line. Bump, bump, rattle, rattle. Oh, that's bad. I did not mean to do that to you. It kind of shows how thick they are in there. I just hooked him in the side. I just kind of felt it, felt something wiggling and uh, felt a rub. Oh, I didn't mean to poke you in the side. That wasn't very nice, was it? All right, I'll put you back. Don't tell your friends though. No, no. Shh, shh, shh. no talk. I still got a scale there. There's a bunch of them. I mean, it, they're just packed in right in this one spot, right in front of me. Whoa, that's not a small mouth. Ooh, it, it goes to show you. Oh, stinky, stinky carp. How many fish are in this one spot? I've snagged two of the four fish that I've caught. I mean, I'm really just dragging it through a mess of fish flesh. All right, let's let him back in. Good buddy. All right, here's a close up of the, uh, the rattle. I'm actually gonna have to rip this one open, this tube open, because I pre-rig them uh, and I crazy glue, glue them in place. Um, there's your, you know, standard three, three and a quarter inch black with red flake tube, and that's the glass rattle. You know, we we sell these at confidencebaits.net. Uh, Bass Pro Shops has them. You can you can get them in most places, and it's the perfect size to fit down in a tube. Um, I won't go through the whole rigging of the tube. But I will tell you that Chris Gorsuch and I did a real nice video. He showed, he demonstrated how to do the rigging of these, the tubes on the dragon heads with the rattle and the little piece of Sanku in there. So if you look around in, in the, uh, you know, the Tightline Junkies Journal, you look for Chris Gorsuch on tube rigging, you'll, you'll get that tutorial uh, and, and figure out how I'm doing these right here. It's a nice rig because it, it comes through, it's got the rattle, uh, it, it, it actually orients the bait upward a little bit, that the tentacles up off the bottom, not straight up, but up at like a 45, and it, the dragon head really, t you know, acts like a sled, and it brings it through all the, the brush there, I just kind of pulled it through, where it's probably some submerged, um, you know, grass stalks or something down there, so. I knew there were some big ones in there. Oh, that was a giant. <laughs> right in the roof of the mouth. Came right out. Let's see what we got here. Oh, that's a beauty. He's a, let's see, 19 inch or 19 inch, 37 degrees, 37 degree water, and actually dropping water temperature. Uh, we had been up to 41. It day and a half ago and uh, the deal is that, that this is that this rising water is concentrating them right next to a wintering hole you know you can't just go out anywhere and, and find an eddy like this in it and it work it's not necessarily going to work uh, this one does because out into the river from here there's a lot of you know current protected areas that they like to be in most of the winter 
and this higher rising water uh, in, in late winter, early spring is, there's already a concentration of fish out here and it's just concentrating them even more. These are not optimal conditions, muddy water, dropping temperatures, but it's concentrating them. So I'm putting my lure where there's a lot of fish in one tiny little spot. And I mean, where I've gotten the last three hits have been in an area the size of, you know, um, less than the size of a car for sure. So it's a tight little spot. See a fishy. So this isn't a very complicated concept uh, with what happens on a river when the, the river comes up where these fish move to, uh, but when you have an ice out flood, it's even more dramatic. Uh, this is, you know, a schematic of, a, of the winter hole that I was fishing. Um, it's the end of winter and the ice is busting loose and you have a series of these these ledge rocks here's one real dominant ledge rock there's some below and in in low or even medium water these fish spread out you know they're 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 in this this area of somewhat protected slower water generally and the lower the water gets the more they spread out but normally you can catch them all over this hole but when you have the high water come especially when you have chunks of ice come down and and you know it, it just moves them out of these ledges that are that are mid-river and it just concentrates them and that's that's where I set up I mean I, I had my kayak right on that bank and I was pounding these fish that were you know within half a cast of where I was sitting so even though there, there weren't optimal conditions we had we had water that was muddy which you know can keep them from seeing the bait uh, it, and water that was decreasing in, in temperature, you, you certainly, you know, will do well if you have a concentration of fish right in front of you or right on the bank.